Hi, and welcome to the Incite My Life channel. So we've got another practice problem coming from the SOA exam uh, ACTEX study manual. And this one's a tough one. Two players put one dollar into a pot. They decide to throw a pair of dice alternatively. The first one who throws a total of five on both dice wins the pot. How much should the player who starts add to the pot to make this a fair game? So if you're like me, when I first saw this, I was like, it's not a fair game? Well, apparently it's not, and we're going to see why exactly this isn't a fair game. So the key here is to be able to identify the types of things that you need to be doing for this problem. So obviously, you know, I mean, unless you're, you know, you've been doing this for a while and, you know, it just comes easy to you, then for most of us, we just can't see the bigger picture. So what we want to try and do is break the problem into more manageable parts. And we're going to try and, you know, decompose it and solve it in pieces. So the first thing that we want to do is express the probability for player one to win the pot. So now it says that the winner is the one who rolls a five on both dice. So let's think about how many different ways we can get a five on two dice. So we can get a one and a four and a four and a one and we can get a two and a three and a three and a two. So that's four ways. And out of a total of 36 different types of rolls. So four out of 36 tells us that our probability of winning is one over nine. So now uh, let's try and examine the, the back and forth type of um, turn taking that they're gonna do. So for here, this is the probability of player one winning the pot. So notice that on the first the first throw that he makes, he has a 1 in 9 chance of getting the pot. Now notice though in the second time, uh, you see plus 1 over 9 and then plus 8 over 9 squared, or I mean times 8 over 9 squared. So the reason we have an 8 over 9 squared is because that's the amount of losses that he has to go through in order to win on his second turn. So think about that for a minute. because. What that basically is saying is that he didn't get it on the first try, so he passed the dice to player two. Player two didn't get it, and now he rolls and he gets it. So that's the probability for him getting it on his second roll. And then you can see on his third roll that it means that he didn't get it on the first, passed it, they didn't get it, they passed it back, he didn't get it again, he passed it back, they didn't get it, and then he gets it on the fourth try, or on the fifth try, sorry. So you can see that this is kind of the way that the player one wins the pot. This is the setup for this. And this should look very familiar already, just the type of series that this is. So let's see if we can pull anything out. And our greatest common factor would be the one over nine, so we pull that out. And what we're left with is one plus eight over nine squared, and then eight over nine to the fourth power. So that is definitely a geometric series. and if we try and find the common ratio, remember that it's the second number over the first number, so 8 over 9 squared over 1 is just 8 over 9 squared. And we're asking ourselves, is this an infinite geometric series or a finite geometric series? And we know that it's infinite because it could go on, I mean, indefinitely. I mean, obviously, they're, they're going to get the roll sometime, you know, probably in less than a million rolls, but I mean, you never know. They might roll to a million or even beyond that. So for the sake of this example, this is an infinite geometric series. So that being the case, the sum is one over one minus R. And in this case, R was eight over nine squared. So let's put it all together now. So we have one ninth, which was our greatest common factor, and we multiply it by the sum formula, giving us the probability of 9 over 17. So that's the probability that player 1 wins. So now it should be clear to us that, hey, wait a minute, player 1 actually has an advantage over player 2. But how much of an advantage? So player 2 has uh, the probability of 8 over 17 of winning the game. So in order to see the difference, we just take the first uh, times the amount of money they put in. So 9 over 17 player one put in a dollar and then eight over seventeen player two put in a dollar and you can see that their difference then is one over seventeen so at this point what we want to do 
is ask ourselves is how can we change the advantage to zero? So right now there's an advantage for player one of one over 17. How can we change it so that there's no advantage? So it's a zero advantage. And the problem actually gives us the hint by saying that we want to add money to the pot in order to change the advantage. So what we're going to do then is we're going to examine the difference. Okay, so we have 9 over 17 times the dollar, and then minus 8 over 17, and then normally it was times 1, but what we're going to do is we're going to add something so we can balance out the difference. And that something we're going to just call C, which we don't know yet. So when we fully work out this problem, we're going to see that C is 1 over 8. So you can tell from this type of problem that we have to be able to identify our different types of formulas and techniques for this. And that's the thing with exam P and with the actuary exams just in general is that they're very, very, very comprehensive. So you have to make sure that you're solid in your math skills on this. And I know it's hard, you know, there's a lot of different things to remember. But, you know, you just got to keep reviewing these different formulas and make sure that you're familiar with them. So in this case, it was the um, geometric series. And also, you know, we had to kind of look at it and try and model the advantage that player one has. And so you just, you know, you, you want to know the math and the formulas and memorize them, but you also want to know how to apply them. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. That concludes our SOA exam problem today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.